A young man wanted to get married, was looking for a young beautiful girl. Finally, he found. After how many years? For how many years have you been looking? Some people look for three, four, five years. I find it very strange. Because Alhamdulillah, we have so many righteous girls. Why should you put any other condition? Why the parents should make it difficult for children, their children? Or why should you pick up uh, like a model uh, with certain uh, size and certain color and certain uh, requirements? The moment she's righteous, it doesn't matter. Even if she is deaf, blind, uh, dumb, uh, leper, it doesn't matter. As long as she's a good believer, you want to get married. So I'm sure, I mean, all of these together won't come in one package. <laughs> So get married even without looking at your wife. If your intention is to protect your deen and practice the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Allah will give you the best of this world because of your good intention. Even when you think you're going to be misled or mistreated. However, finally, this man finds a young girl. He goes to ask his father to accompany him to meet the girl and the family of the girl. The girl comes to meet the young man with his father. His father snatches some looks at the young girl. They go out after the meeting. The father tells the son, this girl is not good for you. This girl befits me. No, 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 you shouldn't. This girl is too good for you. It's suitable only to me. They disagree. And this is a good reason for disagreement. Because no father is supposed to be in that position at all, of course. So they disagree. And the son is in love now with the girl. So he wouldn't sacrifice the girl for the sake of his father. The father is already also in love with the girl. He wants the girl for himself. I don't know whether there is any type of such girls you can love at first sight. This is only in poetry. It doesn't exist. Loving for them at first sight exists only in poetry. Because when people love uh, at first sight and they get married, love should grow. Unfortunately, uh, love wanes, becomes weaker, doesn't grow. True love becomes bigger and stronger. We spoke about this enough, uh, anyway. So they disagree. They go to the they, they go to court. The judge, as corrupt as most judges, even in the Islamic world nowadays. So the judge asks them to bring the girl. To ask her for her opinion. When the judge sees the girl. <laughs> I can see, you know the story. So the judge falls in love with the girl. At, at one point or another, sometimes you have no control over your emotions. I told you, this is just an imaginary figure. Because it's only in the story. It exists in the story for the purpose of the story. But in reality, it doesn't exist. So... The judge says, this girl is not good for any of you. This girl is too good, too beautiful to be to any of you a wife. This girl is suitable only to me. So they take the case to the ruler of the country, to the Sultan. The Sultan again brings the judge, the man, and uh, his son, and the girl. When he looks at the girl, he realizes why they all why they all fell in love with her. He falls in love with her and says, No, the girl should be suitable to me only. Now four people 
are fighting with each other. Every one of them wants to get married to the girl. Okay, next episode after Asr. Now four people are fighting for this young girl. She, she's actually wiser than all of them. She said to them, okay, I'll uh, make a test. I'll run and you run behind me. The first person who catches me, I'll be his wife. So they all run and she runs. She runs and they're running behind her. She disappeared from their eyesight. She's running so fast. All of a sudden, they came, they saw a big hole. Dark and deep. And they saw the girl standing there in the hole. And four of them are up, looking at her down. She was telling them, I am the dunya and this is your grave. I am the dunya and this is your grave. It's all metaphorical and symbolic to show how we are running behind the dunya, brothers and sisters. We are running behind the dunya, making every effort to catch the dunya and the least efforts for our deen. It's just anything extra we have when we are free and when we are really in good shape, then we do something for the sake of Allah. But for the dunya, we never get tired. We never get bored. We have time for every deal. We have time for every new job. We have time for everything for the dunya. And the least we are doing is for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.